This is manufacturing. Almost every product we use in our daily lives is manufactured. Manufacturing engineering is a discipline of engineering focused on understanding and improving manufacturing processes and procedures to optimize production methods. In this footage, an engine block is being manufactured. The CNC machine removes material from the block until the desired shape is reached. This type of manufacturing is called subtractive manufacturing and works by taking a block of material and cutting away bits until you get a desired shape. But what if we could go the other way and start from the ground up and print a part? What would that look like? Let's take a closer look. I was just looking over the design specs for a new experiment I'm working on with my friend Hannah. While uh, she makes that part, I figured we could talk about some of the manufacturing processes she's going to use along the way. This is the Oregon State University School of Mechanical, Industrial, and Manufacturing Engineering Prototyping Lab. Here, OSU engineering students can manufacture parts for their engineering projects and realize their own cutting edge designs. Now, many of the parts we use in our daily lives are manufactured. Clothes, cars, game systems, even food. And for a lot of those parts, that manufacturing process starts with a block of material like this that we cut down and reduce through subtractive machining processes to get a desired shape, like this. But that's not the only way to manufacture things. So let's take a look at another. Additive manufacturing also known as 3D printing, is a process of building a part up layer by layer, joining every layer together to make a three-dimensional shape. Extruded plastic 3D printers and resin 3D printers like this one have enabled hobbyists and designers to actualize real parts like this. 3D printing is still on the cutting edge of manufacturing processes, and so we're still researching ways to improve it. One possible improvement is to be able to print in solid metal so you can take a part right off the printer and put it into production. But how could we do that? There are several different techniques used when 3D printing metal, some involving lasers, welders, and others electron beams. Each of these different methods have different strengths and weaknesses that make them better or worse for a given design or type of metal. Today, we'll focus on selective laser melting, also known as SLM 3D printing. SLM is a free-form manufacturing process which builds up a solid metal part layer by layer by laying out a thin layer of fine metal powder and then melting the metal particles together with a laser. When this happens, the laser transfers energy to the metal powder as directed thermal radiation in the form of heat. This energy heats the metal powder to its melting point, forming a small pool of molten metal. This pool of molten metal is like a tiny crucible, similar to crucibles used to melt metal in a casting process. In this melted state, a whole array of complex physics sets up, including small convective currents in the melt pools which mix the molten liquid metal, as well as thermal conduction and convection, cooling and solidifying the metal. By taking advantage of these processes, engineers can strategically alloy metals or even embed nanoparticles in them, strengthening the materials beyond what would be possible with conventional manufacturing techniques. Here at the Oregon State University Powder Metallurgy Additive Manufacturing Laboratory, Oregon State University researchers are looking at how to use selective laser melting, otherwise known as SLM 3D printing, to print solid metal parts. This is Hannah Ko, master student in mechanical engineering here at Oregon State University, snappy dresser, and an expert in SLM 3D printing. Hi, Hannah. Hi, AJ. How's it going? Pretty good. So, uh, what's all the hype with 3D printing these days? Well, 3D printing allows us to create complex parts that wouldn't be possible with conventional methods. These parts could be stronger and lighter and even have complex internal geometries that even the most sophisticated machining tools couldn't cut. So 3D printing offers a lot of flexibility for engineers to really design to the cutting edge. Exactly. More specifically on you, uh, what is your interest in SLM 3D printing? With SLM, we can create continuous material properties or isotropic properties. Um, this is because we don't have to machine the parts separately and then join them. With SLM, 
we can print it all from the bottom up and theoretically have the same properties as the parent material. So SLM 3D printing might be able to make very strong, highly complex parts that are potentially stronger than the parts we make with conventional machining. So how do the materials we use affect that process? Well, one of the benefits of selective laser melting is we're able to use high strength materials that are difficult to machine using conventional tooling methods because they're stronger than some of the tools themselves. Another material benefit is we're able to save material because we're not taking a solid block and taking it away. We're building the part from the bottom up, so we only use as much material as we need. That makes a lot of sense. So what about here in this lab? What are you researching right now? We're trying to optimize the density of the powder bed by using two distinct particle sizes, one much smaller than the other, so that it fills the interstitials between the larger particle size and the packed powder. Cool, and can you, I mean, can you fiddle with that particle size or add different materials to increase the strength? Absolutely. Another thing that we're working on in this lab is creating a metal matrix composite with nano oxide particles distributed throughout the material. This kind of acts like other composites like carbon fiber where you get the hardness of the oxide particles but you also get the ductility of the metal creating a very strong and very durable part. Very cool. Nanoparticle reinforced 3D printed metal is a pretty cool idea. Can we see it in action? Yeah, I've got a part in the machine right now. So we've taken our 3D model and sliced it into two dimensional layers. Now each of those layers are going to be printed by spreading a thin layer of powder onto the platform and then scanning the laser into the pattern of the two dimensional shape. If you look closely, you can see one of the layers being printed on top of the powder right now. Oh, that's so cool. Very cool. So I layer, lower, layer, lower, layer, lower, and then at the end of it, we get our part. Exactly. Hannah, this is so cool. Thank you very much for having me today. Uh, I'll be back later to pick up the part. See you then. One advantage of 3D printing is we can print highly complex parts. This is the burner that I picked up from Hannah earlier today. You can see that it has a very complex internal geometry with fins swirling and a little cavity in there and even some internal stuff that you can't see. The purpose of this design is to allow the burner to take in fuel, vaporize it, mix it with the air, and combust it in a very clean and cool looking flame. 3D printing technologies like these are already changing the way that we approach engineering. We use 3D printed parts in airplanes, surgical implants, and prosthetics. But it's important to note, 3D printing is not a replacement for conventional machining. We still need both, but 3D printing is a powerful new tool that we can use to really push the bounds of engineering. And if you'd like to try your hand at 3D printing, I've teamed up with the Corvallis Benton County Public Library and Oregon State University's own Valley Library to give you an opportunity to print your own 3D printed name tag for free. There's a link in the description with the details that you need to check that out. Just make sure that you come visit Corvallis or Oregon State University to pick up your nameplate when it's done printing. I'm AJ, host of Lib Lab, and if you like this episode and want to see more awesome science demos like this one, do us a favor and click that like button and subscribe to Lib Lab so you never miss an episode. Thanks for watching.